Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Do not attempt this at home. Vitiated how to will not be responsible because you decided to be a cheap ass and not hire professional. On with the show. I guess it's going to be how to tow your travel trailer or fifth wheel. Actually, more, well, it's both fifth wheel and travel trailer. But it's mainly the fifth wheel because you've got a lot of goober clowns out there that are dragging these real heavy ass fifth wheels. I mean, some of the smaller ones are okay, but you got some of these goober asses that are dragging around these big, heavy duty. 37 foot, 40 foot, 42 foot fifth wheels dragging around with a half ton truck. Nope, not today, not any other day. And I'm probably going to get hit in one of the groups because I said something about it. <laughs> I don't care. But it's like this. If you're going on Facebook or any other social media to get help with the... um. What you need to have to tow your fifth wheel or travel trailer with, you need to t contact the manufacturer, talk to somebody else, because the whiny asses in there, they're not about helping people. They're about the entitlement and not being told what they can and can't do. So if you disagree with their can and can't do entitlement, they call you the tow police. And then that tow police will get you banned because the admins are a bunch of whiny crybaby participation trophy generation whiners. So there's that. That's a mouthful, huh? Yeah. So, me personally, I have had a CDL for almost 20 years. And I've had plenty of experiences with a lot of weight and different styles of trucks and different vehicles in general. Because I have done some of the ridiculousness you can think of. Not when I had a CDL. You get a lot of trouble for that with a CDL. So I always made sure whenever I did something stupid, I didn't have a CDL. So, with that being said, can you pull a 37-foot, 16,000-pound fifth wheel, which is what mine is, 37.5 inches, and the gross weight that it says it can be is 16,000 pounds. That's 14,000 of the actual travel trailer itself and 2,000 additional weight per the manual that I have. Yes, I know how to read. Just because I'm fat don't mean I don't know how to read. So with that, can you do it? Yes. I've seen a lot of people do it on the road. And I've also seen a lot of people pull that size fifth wheel in another box trailer. Is that legal? If you have a CDL, no, it's not. And I don't give a goddamn what anybody says. I'm telling you, if you have an actual CDL and you ever go through a damn scale, depending on the state, you will get in trouble. Because once you have that CDL, your rules and regulations change from a normal person with a driver's license, whether it's an RV or not. Because you have a CDL and you are considered to be smart enough not to do stupid shit. So, if you don't have a CDL, yeah, I've seen people get away with it. I've seen a lot of it. But you'll find that one state, there's always that one state that was going to nail your ass for it. So, there's that. Back to the thing at hand. Can I pull my fifth wheel with it? Yes, I could. Am I going to? Absolutely fucking not. I've had way too much experience on the road. <laughs> that shit can happen, and it's... I like the stopping power of a one ton. And the half ton and a one ton are not the same. I don't give a goddamn. Even a three quarter ton and the one ton ain't the same. So I don't care what you say. It's I've had experience with all three and I know better. So with that being said, I'm going to have the proper vehicle for the proper thing. 
and a good word of advice. If you can't afford to play or can't afford to pay, don't play. Because it's gotten to a point now since COVID, since 2019, insurance companies are not playing anymore. They are not playing about anything. They are going to find any way possible to not to pay your claim. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you an example. Right now, and I thought it was just me, but sometime later, it ain't. Progressive. If you have someone that is not on your policy, that is a licensed driver, and they use your address, they will automatically start charging you for that driver. Whether they're on any of your other policies, you're, they are not covered on your vehicles or nothing, they will automatically start charging you. Why? Because that's in the rules and the fine print. They're not the only ones that did it, but it's the only ones that I can remember offhand that it actually affected me that I know for a fact it happened. And there's a lot of other stuff about it. So with that being said, you can do whatever you want. You are entitled to do it. Have at it. Natural selection is hard at work nowadays. It really is. And I've seen quite a few accidents of fuck around and find out. People thinking they had the right vehicle for the right trailer. And it wasn't the right vehicle. It walked them all over the place. So I know what I'm using. I'm using a one ton. It's got the stopping power and it's got the pulling. So... If I ever decide to upgrade to a 40 foot or a 44 foot, whatever I decide to upgrade to, I have the truck pretty close to it. I might get a four, a 450 or a 4500. I don't know. I'm kind of iffy about it because again, more stopping power, more this, more that, whatever. But as it stands right now, I have the availability of a one ton. That's not mine. I can borrow it. It's uh, my son's, so I don't have to worry about it. And then when I go to buy my own, or I'll just use that one, whatever, I'll do accordingly to my needs or my future needs. But under no circumstances, do not trust them clowns on Bitch Book. Because you'll ask one question, and you can put it in five groups, you'll get 500 different answers. And maybe one out of all those answers might be right. And then still it's going to be something wrong with it. So do your research. Do your due diligence. And learn. If you have any questions, go to your local driver's license office and pick up a commercial driver's license book. You don't have to take the test for an RV. But it will, knowledge, it will give you better, better knowledge for what is required of you on the road. And what the insurance companies are going to expect. Now there are some trucks out there that require the CDL for an RV. The big heavy duty HDs that are the actual semis that people are trying to turn into RVs. Some states do require you to have a CDL for that. But it's based upon whatever state your license is in whether or not you have to have it. So it's just to be mindful.